And I no! get, and I get every, I'm gonna compare and crash with you first. Okay. So we can bully you. The way okay. this goes so fucking stupid sometimes <laughs> really hurts me. It's time for the 13 nights of Sarawee. Sarah, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joined by two of my favorite people. I have Monica from Monica Kim. And I'm Elias over from Elias. Yes. Me and Monica are visiting Elias in New York. And we No, decided... no. I'm in, I'm in California. And then we're visiting Elias in Los Angeles. Finally, people color your channel. Wow. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you can hear the fan in the background of this video, but it's so <laughs> fucking hot and Elias' apartment, we have to leave it on. The concept of our collab on my channel is that we're going to be comparing and contrasting our reading tastes on Goodreads and kind of just arguing about books that we just read on, like maybe I hate a book and Monica loves it, or vice versa, and also with Elias as well, so. And this is also how we discovered that Elias is not my friend on Goodreads, and I think, <laughs> I think someone is at fault. I'm pretty sure between the two of us, to remove friends, you would probably accidentally remove... Why? What does that mean? Why? Between the two of us, you're just more clumsy. Oh, we gave Angel Fall five stars. We did! I read that in like 2015. Me too. <laughs> it was, I liked it back then. I don't know if I'd like it now. Yeah. I'm Stranger Dreamer, yes. Night Circus. Oh my god, the evolution of my diaries. That's we, so old. <laughs> you were like five stars. Yeah, book talk, bring that back. Oh, Black Iris, so underrated. Okay, Good we girls. both like the Raven Boys. We both like Black Iris. Serpent and Dove. Oh, you can have book Okay, four stars. actually, I would say that you and I actually have pretty similar reading tastes sometimes. This and girl wanted to bully me. <laughs> I gave Serpent and Dove one star. Mm, okay, let's talk about it. I have no thoughts. <laughs> Video. Let's talk about it. Give her a video. Like, <laughs> no thoughts. <laughs> you must give in. I don't have a damn thing around. But I give it one star. I see one that we're gonna have a fight on. That's fine. Song of the Kiddies. No, Starless Sea. <gasps> Oh. That is a five star only book. Erin Morgenstern can really write beautiful words. But what is she saying? Basically, you're telling me that you're too dumb to understand. Oh. <laughs> Title of this video is gonna be like, Ellie is calling me stupid for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot survive on vibes alone. I need a plot. It has a plot. It has a very exciting plot. It has a very plot. good plot. plot Sometimes flow. you just have to let it wash over you. you know? I tried. I was trying to bathe <laughs> in it and I felt dirty after. What is going on? Not, well, that, that's <laughs> dirty. But it was Clearly like, the wrong choice of words. <laughs> it's not, it's not computing. <laughs> Look at the way we I re rated November 9. Five stars! Why, no, why I would you say it? Okay, stars? I was a Colleen Hoover whore back in the day when I started my channel. So I read Colleen Hoover like before I even knew about who she was. Like I saw her book at Target mm -hmm. and I saw this guy or the cover, it said Hopeless. Hopeless, 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 hopeless. And I picked it up. And you related. And I read it, <laughs> fucking loved it. Reread that book like three times. <laughs> and I get five out of five stars. Nine, the one that you told me about? Yes. And oh, I get and no! I get, <laughs> and I get every significant book after that. Five stars. Okay, are you rethinking, rethinking my reading taste. Like, okay, if I read November nine, five stars, I gave Lily Penelope Douglas like corrupt. Uh, where the bully falls falls in love with like um, mm -hmm. the girl that he bullies, five stars too. Like I literally gave like dark adult romance, like when I was like eighteen twenty, five stars. So I can understand sort of like the where book talk is. What does it from. say about you and your need for therapy? Oh, I forgot that you like middle game. I fucking hate middle game. Again, I think when it comes to starless sea with big words and eloquency, <laughs> you're not that type of reader. You don't really care for the vibes. You can't really understand it. And no. knowing you, it's okay. <gasps> That's so Knowing rude. you, it's okay. <laughs> the world building is like kind of. It like, literally takes place in our world. No, oh, you mean like the science and the alchemy? Do I fully understand? Like the magic no. system, like the science system. Do okay. you want so, like, to fully here's understand? the thing. I think the difference it, that's happening here is so there is two different types of fantasies. There's hard fantasy and soft yes. fantasy, and some people prefer hard, some people prefer yes. soft, and some okay. people prefer, prefer both, which I do. Um, and I think you just do not like soft fantasy. No, no, I agree. Well, you both liked Night Film. We did. I gave that one star. Okay, why? I, okay, so there's a few different reasons. I had a bunch of issues. One, I just thought it was a very dude bro kind of book where mm -hmm. for me, like when I read, I read another book by the author where it also had like a lot of sexism in it, but I just thought it was kind of like not her POV, but more so like just the way that she was writing the men in mm -hmm. the book, but then mm -hmm. like in night film she kept making like weird ex-wife jokes granted i read this like li much later than i think you guys i read it in like 2015. yeah and so like there there were some like problematic things in it that like you i had a better i felt for. like i felt a little uncomfortable by mm -hmm. <gasps> 
Oh yeah, I gave Bunny one star. Oh yeah, Bunny, I, I also, oh, we both I hate Bunny. Bunny. We just like Bunny, they really don't mm -hmm. like Bunny. My issue with Bunny is I also have like a big hang up when it comes to academia stories or like stories that take place in academia. And like, it's very hit or miss for me. Like if I like it or not. And for me, it was just like a miss. I also just like reading it. I was like, I feel like I'm reading someone's like MFA project. Mm, I, just, I agree. It just felt like something that was funny. written. And I think it was done on purpose, but it just like felt so much like, oh, this is written for my like MFA writing class. And it got critiqued by people and I've made those edits. And here is that book. Yeah. And that's like what frustrated me reading it. Is it? I feel like it just like sort of lacked an authenticity. Um, I just like the weirdness of it. It was the one of the, like I said in my review, I think, one of those strangest, weirdest, wildest books I've ever read. Mm -hmm. And it was just different because it was all set in college. I don't read a lot of books set in college. And I just like the overall vibes. Uh, speaking of academia, the next book we have here <gasps> is The Secret History. You both love Secret Ooh, History? Oh, I do. And I, and I DNF'd it. Oh, you only gave it four stars though. Why'd you only give it four stars? I thought it was, you know, like I said, pretentious at some parts. Some parts were really dragging. I liked it well enough. It wasn't my favorite. And it was just fine overall. I strongly disagree. I love The Secret History. I think it's a masterpiece. And I love that it's basically a book about like really awful people who just like get wrecked. Like they just have their lives just totally exploded. People have a lot of things to say about Donna Tartt though in general. And I feel like The Secret History is also just so fun because there's so much, so many allusions to things. So it's like the kind of book that like you can really like get lost in and like take a lot of time like researching all the things that they're sort of referencing and like what Donna Tartt is referencing and the way that she's writing things too. Fun is an interesting word <laughs> to use for that book. I swear to God, I listened to 10 hours of that book. I, I gave it a, a college try. Yeah, yeah. First of all, Donna Tartt herself was on the audiobook oh. and her voice for Richard. <laughs> No, Donna, you didn't have to narrate your own book. You could have let a guy narrate it. But I know that you guys love, love, love Song of Achilles, and mm -hmm. I, I do not. That's fair. Yeah, I think for me, like we've talked about it in the past, where you've said like you, you don't like boring, Greek mythology, but you and like you also don't like Greek mythology, yeah. and those are two things. Like I will yeah. say, like even when I like I talked about the video or talked about the book in, in on my channel, I don't find battle stuff to be very engaging, and so like all the actual like when they're at war, like it very much like that whole section, which is like a good one third of the book, uh, really dragged for me. Mm -hmm. And had the end not been as strong as it was, and had my like passion for these two characters been as strong as it was, right. um, I wouldn't have liked the book. Like had it not been the book that it was, I, I, I so yeah, I see where you're coming from. Right. When comparing our books, now I'm looking at our books, I really appreciate that we both hated uh, Mansfield Park. I really appreciate that. Yeah. It's not Jane Austen's Trash. first word. I understand what she was saying, what she was trying to say, but I simply don't want to experience it again. Oh yeah, that's the thing with both of you. I feel like I have a lot of things we do agree on. There's yeah, just like, we all it's, have really good taste. Yeah, it's just those random books like Song of Achilles, yeah. Middle Game, <coughs> Star Lucy. Like honestly, ones that actually are divisive among yeah, yeah, people, yeah. not even just me. Oh, I know what we disagree on. <gasps> what? Um, what is that? That one book by Margaret Rogerson. Oh, Sorcerer's Thorns? <gasps> Sorcerer oh, Thorns. she hates that book. But I also, okay. Not valid. That means you hate Howl's Moving Castle. No, mm -hmm. so the issue is she starts off by giving you so many like cool concepts and I was so excited. Like I remember reading it and like I was filming a vlog for it and I never posted it and the whole time like for the first like half of the book I was like this is gonna be my new favorite book of all time. I loved it. I loved the main character. I loved the love interest. I loved the vibe and then it kept going and I just feel like the plot was so for me just like really lackluster and um, it just got really messy and I just felt like she was trying to do too much than like what she was capable of writing at the time. At the end of the day, it's not like we have polar opposite yeah. reading tastes. Essentially what this video is, is it's um, Monica being really eloquent and Ellie no! is calling me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to re like, rewind this entire video and see if I actually called you stupid. You, you did. did. I did? You did! <laughs> did. I'm like literally the nicest person. I'm gonna <laughs> roll the tape. <taste. laughs> You can't really understand it. The way okay. you're so so fucking stupid sometimes, <laughs> that you're too dumb to understand. Um, but yeah, I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't know if this was as tumultuous of a video as we thought it would be. We didn't really duke it out. We, we, we didn't duke it out. Well, if you guys want to see more of us together, <laughs> I recommend going to both Elias and Monica's channels because the class we did there were really fun and cute and it's a good vibe. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. 
Have a nice, nice day. day. <laughs>